In this video, we're going to be discussing habituation exercises. Habituation exercises are the go-to for treatment of central vestibular deficits. In general, the patient's going to perform a movement in such a way that they intentionally produce mild to moderate dizziness-related symptoms. And those symptoms could be dizziness itself, it could be nausea, it could be any number of things that's important to the patient. And this production of mild to moderate dizziness-related symptoms is also called engaging the dizziness barrier. We'll talk about this more in a minute, but it's very important that when you give a habituation exercise that they actually engage the dizziness barrier. It does no good if they don't get any symptom provocation, and normally that happens when the exercise is not at a great enough intensity, duration, or number of repetitions. They're insufficient, in other words. Now the green line right here represents the normal dizziness barrier. This is for a healthy individual, someone who does not have a central vestibular deficit. The red line down here represents the impaired dizziness barrier for somebody that does have a central vestibular deficit. And the horizontal axis right here represents the number of repetitions of the movement, the intensity of the movement, or the duration of the movement, just very generally. Now this diagonal black line right here represents that as we increase the number of repetitions or increase the duration or increase the intensity, whatever it is we're measuring, that we get an increased potential for dizziness. That's the vertical axis. And notice that for someone with an impaired dizziness barrier, this intensity or this duration or number of repetitions is enough to cause dizziness, as represented by the fact that this black line crosses the impaired dizziness barrier. But for someone who's normal, it might be easy, okay? Because we don't come anywhere close enough in repetitions, intensity, or duration to cause dizziness in a healthy person. Now for most habituation exercises, we're going to look at them in terms of the number of repetitions of the movement or the duration of the particular movement. So if we do it in terms of repetitions, we want to do enough repetitions at a particular speed to elicit mild to moderate symptoms, and then do two more repetitions. Remember, our whole goal is to engage the dizziness barrier. That's why we want to do enough repetitions to yield those mild to moderate symptoms. And then we want to do maybe two more repetitions. And there's not a hard number here, but two is normally a good amount. If the movement is duration-based, then we're going to do it for a sufficient time at a particular speed to elicit mild to moderate symptoms, and then we may do it for an additional five to 10 more seconds because it is duration or time-based. And the whole goal here is to perform the aggravating movement enough to continually engage the dizziness barrier in order to habituate the central nervous system to that movement. And when we say habituate the central nervous system, then what we mean is we're allowing the central nervous system to get used to the stimulus or the movement and to better tolerate it. So habituate means get used to. And as the person does that movement more and more and more and their central nervous system gets used to it, they get better tolerance to it. And so that dizziness barrier goes up and up and up and up and they're tolerating more and more of that exercise, whether it's intensity, repetitions, duration, until finally they no longer have an impaired dizziness barrier and they're now able to tolerate a movement that a normal person or healthy person is able to. The first habituation exercise we're going to look at, shown here on the right, is the VOR cancellation exercise, which is performed exactly the same way as the VOR cancellation test. Now, the VOR cancellation test is a component of the oculomotor exam, which we cover in a previous video. And when it, among other tests, are abnormal, it indicates that somebody likely has a central vestibular deficit, and the treatment for a central vestibular deficit is habituation. So in general, you would give the VOR cancellation exercise in one of two conditions. When the patient has an abnormal VOR cancellation test as part of the oculomotor exam, or for habituating the central nervous system to better dealing with motion sickness. To perform the VOR cancellation exercise, the patient's going to be seated with their arms fully extended, hands clasped, and one thumb on top of the other. Now the seated and fully extended arms we'll look at in just a minute. The important thing to get first is the grip. So here's the grip right here. 
So they're going to begin by interlocking the fingers and putting one thumb on top of the other like you see right there. Once the patient has the correct grip, you're going to instruct them to keep their gaze fixated on the thumbnail on the top, in this case the left one, throughout the duration of the entire movement or the entire exercise. Now, as we saw before, the patient is going to actively rotate such that their trunk, head, and arms all move together as one unit, as you see in the video. And they keep their gaze fixated on their top thumbnail in that specific grip throughout the duration of the movement. And they're going to perform this in whichever direction is aggravating to their dizziness-related symptoms. It could be only horizontal, or it could be only vertical, as you see right here. This is the vertical VOR cancellation exercise. Again, performed exactly the same way as the corresponding test. Or both directions could be aggravating, and you would know if it's horizontal only, vertical only, or both directions based on the result of the VOR cancellation test. Another common movement requiring habituation would be bending down. So if the patient complains of dizziness symptoms with bending over to pick an object up off the ground, putting on shoes, putting on socks, etc., you might consider giving this exercise. Now obviously here I'm doing the bending from a seated position, but you'll want to get very specific with the patient as to what actually brings on their symptoms. So if it's actually bending from a standing position that brings them on, then you'd obviously do it from a standing position as you see right here. So make sure the exercise is specific to what exacerbates that patient's symptoms. Now in general, this is a repetition-based exercise, not a duration-based. So you can see up there at the top, if the patient gets these symptoms after seven repetitions at this rate, let's say, then you would have them do it for an additional two repetitions, so nine total. Another common habituation exercise is walking with head turns. So if a patient complains of dizziness-related symptoms when they're looking at groceries, walking down the aisle of a store, or maybe they get symptoms while they're turning their head while driving, that may be an indication that they could utilize this. You can do it in the horizontal direction, left and right, as you see right here. Or you could do vertical head turns up and down like you see here. It all depends on what exacerbates the patient's symptoms. It could be horizontal only, vertical only, or both. Now, if this is not brought out in the subjective examination, it might be brought out in a functional gait analysis, or FGA. There's a couple of items in that outcome measure that assess horizontal head turns while walking and vertical head turns while walking. Another common habituation exercise would be gait speed changes. So these you might give if a patient complains of symptoms when they're accelerating while walking or decelerating while walking. And from experience, most people, it's going to be decelerating rather than accelerating. So you can do this one of two ways. You can say go, in which case the patient's going to walk at their normal speed. And then you're going to say fast, and they're going to accelerate to a very, very fast pace. And then you're going to say slow, and for the remainder of the walk, they're going to go at a snail's pace. They're going to go slow. So just for the sake of space in this video here, I've already said go, and the person's already going fast. And then I'm going to say slow, and they immediately decelerate to a snail's pace. That's going to be easier than the progression of this, which is go, fast, stop. So I've already said go, and I've already said fast. The person's already walking fast, and then I'm going to say stop. And they stop on a dime instantaneously. And the reason this is a more aggressive exercise is because the deceleration goes to a complete stop rather than to a slower pace still walking forward. The patient may also get symptoms rolling in bed. So they could get it rolling from supine to sideline, supine to prone, and any other combination of positions that you can think of. So here the patient's beginning in supine and they're rolling into right sideline. And let's suppose that we have determined that this is the aggravating movement. So let's suppose that the patient gets dizziness-related symptoms after five repetitions at a particular rate of rolling. And then you'd have them do two additional repetitions. That would be for rolling in bed. The patient may also get symptoms sitting up in bed. And again, there's a variety of different ways that the patient could sit up. It could be from supine to long sitting, sideline to long sitting. It could be supine to short sitting on the edge of the bed, sideline to short sitting on the edge of the bed. It's up to you to determine what the specific movement is that aggravates the patient's symptoms. And again, this one is repetition-based. So if the patient gets those dizziness-related symptoms after six repetitions, let's say, 
Again, you have them do it for an additional two repetitions to total eight.